Today we're going to do our second tutorial for um, solving equilibrium problems and we're going to look at problems today that involve you using the quadratic equation to solve for concentrations at equilibrium. Um, this is a question from your textbook um, so if we take a look at this question this is a reaction you should be familiar with. We saw an example of it earlier um, in the unit. So we have dinitrogen tetroxide gas decomposing into nitrogen dioxide gas. So that's an equilibrium system and we're given the information that at 325 Kelvin, Kelvin um, KEQ is 0.91 and we are told that initially 0.34 moles of N2O4 is placed in a one liter container and following that equilibrium is established and we want to find the equilibrium concentrations of each of these gases in the container. So um, this is much like the last question that we looked at together we're not given any equilibrium concentrations, so we're going to have to use um, the equilibrium constant expression to solve for x. So let's take a look at our given information, and we'll make a little ice table, see what we know. Um, why don't I move that down a little bit? Um, so we are given information about um, the initial concentration of N2O4, and at the beginning of the reaction we don't have any NO2 present. So if we take a look here, make our ice table, initial change and equilibrium concentrations, and we only need two columns. We have one reactant and one product. So in this column, we'll look at the concentration of N2O4, and over here, the concentration of NO2. All right. So initially, the concentration of N2O4 We've got 0.34 moles in a one liter container. <clears throat> so similar to the last problem that we looked at, that's a trivial calculation to do, but I do want to remind you that you should do it in case um, it's not a one liter container. So 0.34 moles per liter. The concentration of NO2 initially is zero. We can tell the equilibrium is going to shift from left to right because the concentration of NO2 is going to go up. It can't possibly go down. And the concentration of N2O4 is going to go down. Um, so again, we want to remember if there's a coefficient in the balanced equation, we include that in our change line. So when N2O4 goes down um, by some amount, um, the concentration of NO2 will go up by double that amount. And in our equilibrium line, at equilibrium we expect to have 0.34 moles per liter minus x for N2O4, and for NO2 we have 0 plus 2x, which is 2x. So I'm just going to slide this over a little bit. Alrighty. So 0.34 minus x and 2x. So at first glance, this looks like it's um, a pretty simple reaction. It looks like it might be easy to solve for x. We have only one reactant and one product. We're not given either of these concentrations, so we do need to use our KEQ, our equilibrium constant expression, to help us solve this problem. So at equilibrium, um, KEQ is equal to the concentration of NO2 squared divided by the concentration of N2 O4. So the values that we know, um, KEQ is equal to 0.91 at this temperature. Um, and we know, um, we don't know what the concentrations are at equilibrium, but we know their relationship. Okay, so the concentration of NO2 is 2x, so that's squared. And in the denominator, we know the concentration of N2O4 is 0.34 moles per liter minus x. Okay? All right. Um, I'm going to omit the units there, actually. We've talked a little bit about that before, so I'll, I'll sub in 0.34 minus x and leave that like that. Um, so we can solve for x here. 
Um, as you can see, we have a squared, an x squared term, and we're going to have an x term. So in order to solve for x, we'll have to use the quadratic equation. There are situations where we can avoid this. Um, in, in this problem, we can't. But if x is very, very, very small, okay, and if I, by small, I mean if maybe x is, you know, something like decimal zero 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 three, you know, some small value, um, then that means 0.34 minus x is pretty much 0.34. Um, so there are situations where we can ignore x if we know x is going to be really small. How do we know um, whether we're allowed to ignore a subtracted x like that? Uh, well, in order to ignore it, we have to check and see um, we, we check and see what keq times a thousand is. Um, so in this case, keq times a thousand, 0.91 times a thousand is 910. And we compare that number to this number over here. And if this answer over here is smaller than our uh, initial concentration, then we can afford to do some ignoring of x. This isn't a case where we can do that, but I'm just drawing your attention to the fact that sometimes we can ignore this x and avoid using the quadratic equation, and we'll look at an example of that um, in the next problem. So. Um, since this number, keq times 1,000, is very big compared to our initial concentration, we just have to uh, plot ahead and solve for x the old-fashioned way. So 0.34 minus x equals 2x all squared. Um, so what have we got here? Um, zero decimal... Okay, so 3094 minus 0.91x equals, be careful when you square this, um, that will be 4x squared, 2x times 2x. Sometimes people forget to square the 4 and the x, or the 2 and the x, rather. Um, a common error is to put 2x squared here instead of 4x squared. Um, so if we collect our terms on all on one side, we get 4x squared plus um, decimal 91x minus 0.3094. So let me just drag this over a little bit for us. Okay, so at this point um, we can solve for x using the quadratic equation. Um, hopefully that's something that you recall fondly. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And a and b and c being these values here. That's a, that's b, and that's c. Okay, so hopefully you're having uh, pleasant flashbacks to math class if it's been a while for you and the quadratic equation. Um, so you want to substitute these values into here. Um, usually what we do, um, a habit people have is just to, to solve for this part of the equation so they've got, they can see the numbers that they have to work with. So negative b, um, negative 0.91 plus or minus. And so if we look at this number, um, I figured it out ahead of time. Um, so the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the answer I get for that is 2.40. And the whole thing's going to be divided by 2a, so 2 times 4, which is 8. Um, so as you know, when we solve for x using the quadratic equation, we get two roots. Um, we, we actually we end up with two roots. And that's something that is interesting to us, right? Because in chemistry, we only really want one answer. Um, so when we look at the roots that we get, so I've got 0 0.91 um, plus 2.4 divided by 8. So one of the roots that I get is 0 0.0186, or we also get x equals 0 0.91 um, minus 2.4 divided by 8. We get negative um, 0 0.0414. Um, so there's a problem with this one, because concentrations cannot be negative. Um, so we ignore the negative root because it has no real meaning. 
we know that our answer has to be positive because concentrations are always positive. Um, so x equals 0 0.186 in this case. So um, from that, we can use that x value to calculate the concentrations of the um, uh, reactant and product at equilibrium. So the concentration of N2O4 we knew was 0.34 minus x. So that, that'll be 0.34 um, minus, I'm going to round this, I'm going to round x to 0.19 and we get 0 0.15 moles per liter as our concentration of N2O4 and our concentration of NO2 is equal to 2x or 2 times 0.19 and we get 0 0.38 moles per liter um, so that's how we do it um, we're setting up this e uh, equation here, just like we did in the last example. Unfortunately, we can't find the square root of both sides to help us solve for x more cleanly, so we resort to the quadratic equation. Um, there are other questions you can try on page 454. Um, so we looked at number 62. You can try number 63. There are about 10 questions on that page that you can look at. Um, so give them a try.